So I guess we have to talk about the elephant in the room because this is the one video topic that we haven't explored yet. We have talked about everything surrounding this pick and all the other draft picks from my favorite teams, Vancouver, Montreal, Detroit, of course, on day two of the draft, but we have not said a peep about Shane Wright just yet. Now, there is indeed a live stream that we did for day one of the NHL draft, and in that video I didn't really talk about Shane Wright going to Seattle because that is indeed what happened all too much because it was just kind of starstruck with the Kirby Doc trade that took place like a pick, or not a pick, but like a few minutes before the Shane Wright pick was made. But, long story short, Shane Wright, a guy who was scouted ever since he was 13, 14, 15 years old even, a guy who had a better 15-year-old year than Connor McDavid, the guy who was supposed to be the first overall player in this year's draft, and was the first overall consensus pick for the majority of the entire draft season, did not go first. He was not selected by the Montreal Canadiens in front of the hometown Montreal crowd. Everybody thought, okay, darn it, so Slavkovsky is number one. He's going to Montreal, which means that Wright is going to New Jersey, and New Jersey already said that they want to go best player available with their draft pick. And even if the best player available at that spot is a center, they're still going to go for it. Screw the fact that they had won first overall in 20. 17 getting Nico Hischier in 2019 getting Jack Hughes if they get themselves a BPA in 2022 at second overall who is a center they're gonna take him but no that is not what happened either a lot of people were like okay Shane Wright's gonna go to New Jersey and then no they debated us they went with the defenseman Slovak defenseman Simon Nemesh you saw the reaction video on the channel that was also taken from the stream highlights as well and so surely we thought, holy crap, Shane Wright was supposed to go first. You take a look at the rankings over here. I mean, it was only Bob McKenzie, as well as ISS, who had him at number two. Everybody else had him at one. So the fact that he slipped from one to two to three, Arizona, man. Holy crap, Shane Wright's going to go to Arizona. And then they selected Logan Cooley instead. Now... I know some of you might be thinking, okay, why the heck did they do that? I mean, Wright versus Cooley was conversation from, like, December, January-ish, before the World Championships and before the Olympic Games. It was always Cooley Wright, right? And a lot of people said that Cooley could potentially challenge Wright for the first overall spot, but the fact that Cooley went third and Wright went fourth... What's the deal with that, man? And if I had to try to answer that question, obviously I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth or try to make it seem like I'm a scout or anything like that, but this is kind of what happens when you see players slip in NHL drafts. Normally, if you're a team that's drafting at 5th or 6th or 7th overall, you're not going to scout Shane Wright too extensively because you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, he's not going to be there, so why should we focus all of our attention on that guy? Let's focus instead on the Savoys or the Marco Caspers or the Kevin Korchinskis, other guys that could go in the 5-6-7 range and decide from there. This means that when a player that you didn't think was available all of a sudden becomes available, it throws a monkey wrench into your entire draft plans because you go, okay, well, Shane Wright is available here, but we had spent the entire past few months scouting this other guy. We're a lot more comfortable with this other guy. We're a lot more projectable with this other guy. We had a better interview with this other guy. But Shane Wright is there. I don't know, man. I'm kind of feeling in my gut we did our research, and we like the research we did. Let's just go with the other guy instead. This is also why some players who are highly touted in NHL drafts inevitably end up slipping way beyond where we thought they would go, like Brad Lambert this year, Atu Ratu last year, even Joe Valeno in 2018 comes to mind. You could say a similar thing was done here with Arizona and Shane Wright. Maybe the Arizona Coyotes were just saying, okay, well, one and two is going to be Wright Slavkovsky, so let's just talk about Cooley the entire time. Let's focus all of our resources into making sure that Cooley is the right guy at three. And so, when Shane Wright was available at that third overall spot, maybe the Coyotes just said, hey, we're just a lot more comfortable with Cooley. We think this guy's going to be the better player. I would definitely understand it if in a few years you have yourselves a world where Logan Cooley is out producing Shane Wright, because I do think that Cooley has a little bit more of a refined, offensive, flashy, dynamic skill set than Wright does. But it's just apples and oranges at this point, because they're both very good, talented players, and Shane Wright was projected first overall for a reason. 
It's just the fact that he did not go to Montreal. He didn't go to New Jersey. He didn't go to Arizona. He went to Seattle at fourth? Kind of blows your mind, doesn't it? If you had told me, even minutes before the NHL draft started up, saying, hey, where do you think Shane Wright's going to go? I would have said first. I thought the Canadians were going to draft Shane Wright. But I ended up thinking wrong. If you told me that Wright would have gone fourth to Seattle, I would have called you absolutely nuts. Funny enough, there actually were some people out there who thought that that was going to happen. We'll make another video about that as the following weeks go along. But I just wanted to give some props to Seattle as well, because right now you take a look at what they did in this year's NHL entry draft, and it is nothing short of phenomenal. Not only did they take... Admittedly, the easy guy who was going to be there, Shane Wright, was not really projected by anybody to being a fourth overall available player, but Seattle taking him definitely is an easy, easy pick. They also took Jagger Furcus, who is a player I absolutely adore. This guy could be a very lethal playmaker at the NHL level, should everything go right with his development. Yanni Newman was taken by Seattle. David Goyette was taken by Seattle. So was Ty Nelson. This team had a boatload of crazy good picks, and it was highlighted by Shane Wright at fourth overall in the first round. Here are some of the reaction to the entire situation over here. You saw immediately after that Shane Wright stared down the Montreal Canadiens draft table that was right in front of the stage after he took over the hat and he shook the hands of everybody that was there he gave them a stare down and there were some instagram posts made about it and he actually liked those posts you can see the screenshot on the screen here from hockey collective shane wright appears to stare down the habs table and he likes the picture you also had yourselves the wayne gretzky situation over here take a look at this according to elliot friedman on 32 thoughts from yesterday while shane wright was seeing his draft stock drop Wayne Gretzky found his phone number and gave him a call. He gave him some words of encouragement. He also had what Shane Wright said to Uri Slavkovsky himself after seeing the guy. Hey, I told him heck of a job, man. Go kill it there. You deserve it. Super proud of him and super proud of what he has accomplished. So there you go. Shane Wright is being a good sport about the entire thing as well. You then have yourselves what is the quote that he had when it comes to the chip on his shoulder. I won't forget those teams that passed on me. I'll definitely have a chip on my shoulder. Does that not remind you of Philip Zadina, yet another prospect who was a highly touted player in 2018, who was inevitably passed over by Montreal, Ottawa, and Arizona, and he said he's going to fill their nets with pucks? Unfortunately for Zadina, he's not really all too much of a goal scorer at the NHL level right now, so he's not really capable of doing that. But for Shane Wright, you do have yourselves some other comments that he made that are a little bit more easy to absorb. I got drafted into the NHL. I achieved that lifelong dream of being drafted to an amazing team in Seattle with a great future ahead. I wouldn't say it's relief. I would say more excited, more proud, and just honored to be drafted too. Now, I said this in the stream, but I'll say it again here on the video, that I'm actually kind of pissed off that Shane Wright is going to freaking Seattle because, yeah, as a Vancouver Canucks fan living here in Vancouver, that Seattle rivalry is going to get really good really quickly, and Matty Beniers and Shane Wright being at the top of that team's center core is going to make things a lot more difficult for Vancouver Canucks fans going forward and cheering for the blue, white, and green whale team instead of the octopus team. But for Shane Wright, man, like... It's just kind of crazy seeing all these social media reaction too. A lot of people are talking about, oh, it's because he's arrogant. He's arrogant, which is why he got dropped down in the draft rankings, because three teams thought he was arrogant. I don't necessarily think so. I think the guy just talked about himself as a potential first overall pick, and he knew that he was scouted ever since he was 15 years old. He knew he had a better 15-year-old season than Connor McDavid, and he knew that there were people going out there saying that he should have been first overall for years. So for him to talk in the way that he talked about himself heading into the NHL draft, where he was saying things like, yeah, first overall, Montreal, great city, etc., etc., like, I don't blame the kid for that. And furthermore, you definitely saw him talk about the entire process of getting drafted as just being so good for him overall. I kind of agree with the assessment that maybe sometimes you have players like Shane Wright who could be over-scouted because he had been so analyzed ever since he was so young that maybe, at this point, you had more reason to believe, okay, well, we've seen so much footage of this guy, we've seen so many clips of this guy, maybe there's just a little bit too much information we have on this player. And again, that's kind of why we said that Shane Wright's parents even deleted social media because everybody was critiquing their son in a way that they were not comfortable with, right? So, I don't know. 
The Price is Right in Seattle. The Price is Wrong in Montreal, in New Jersey, and in Arizona. Cooley, Nemich, and Slavkovsky all go over right. I still can't believe that happened, even though it's been two days removed from that decision here. Talk to the comments, though, either way, all your thoughts about Shane Wright dropping over to fourth. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99. Seattle, congrats to you guys and Shane Wright, as well as all the other players. Congrats on getting drafted. And bye.